Hey everyone, it's Cody from Bed Agri Health Services. It's a little crazy in the office today. Um, hopefully there's not too much background noise distracting from today's talk, uh, or I won't get barged in on in my office. Uh, so this is going to be about uh, why I think a resume is not as important as it used to be. I still think a resume is, uh, serves the traditional purposes, but I feel like uh, leveraging social media as a veterinarian or veterinary student or as anyone uh, who wants a job is becoming increasingly if not exponentially more important than your resume. So I want to talk to you about why that is. So a resume is something that everyone who's gunning for a job these days will have. It's a listing of your achievements. Uh, which is great, but I think that's about all it does. Um, maybe gets you in the door, uh, but I don't think it does anything once you're in there. If anyone's even looking at it once you're there, they're just judging you for who you are and if you can talk and what your experiences are and what your passions are and if you'd be a good fit for the job. So if you were using social media, uh, this could be a great uh, start off point to talking about it. So if there's a practice, I'm going to speak as if you're a veterinary student or a veterinarian. So if there was a practice that was using social media and got the whole concept and, and understood everything, that would be an easy sell. You could say, uh, I'm on Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, I really enjoy it. These are the reasons why I think it's important. I would love to continue that on uh, through your practice, uh, help create brand awareness within your practice, uh, leverage my uh, knowledge and social media to help promote and market uh, whichever practice I went into. So that would be very important if, and there's so many other things, but I'll try to keep this quick. If a practice didn't know anything about social media, what a great time to, to try to give them a little lesson. So why you use social media, why you think it's important uh, for veterinarians to use it, why you could create some different brand awareness uh, marketing for that practice, how you could do it. And I think it would just be, it would be something different and it would really set you apart compared to the rest of the candidates. Oh, well, it looks like I'm getting barged in on. Hey, yeah. Deeds. I was you just doing a video and you ruined it oh, all. Oh no, why did you say you wanted to do something like this? Oh. How about the video? Do you want to come talk about why a resume is more important? I have no idea. Or why, sorry, why social media is more important than a resume? Oh, sure. Yeah? Yeah. You can come in here or are you just going to sit there? Alright. <laughs> he sits in his office. <laughs> Alright, so this is Diedrich Shadan. Uh, Hi guys. He's one of my social media consultants and got me started on the whole train. So I was just talking about uh, if you were, how social media could set you apart uh, in an interview situation and uh, how if a practice did get the whole social media thing, uh, you could talk about that and how you could really uh, leverage your followers and your knowledge of social media for the practice, for marketing. But if they didn't understand it, it could be a great lead off uh, to starting a discussion and setting you apart. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I totally think that's, uh, I think that's very important. I mean, I don't know about anyone else, but I know that before I hire or bring anyone in for an interview, I would always <laughs> check all their social media. We didn't stuff. even get to that point. Yeah, no, I think there's a lot of, a lot of reactionary um, defense when, when you're applying for a job and you're going through all your Facebook photos and you're trying to clean it up. Um, everybody kind of thinks negatively that I have to hide everything and make sure my security is up there. But I would, I guess I would go the, the opposite way and to make sure that you have, um, you have all of those different things within your social media that somebody could look up uh, you and kind of judge you in a positive light. So I guess for example, if you were say, say a veterinary student, uh, you could be doing video blogs about uh, things that you're passionate about and posting those on YouTube and even if you only had five viewers every day for for four years 
when that veterinarian is looking you up to, to see what you're all about um, with a Google search, those will pop out and they'll see that you're, you know what you're talking about and they can put a, a face to the name and um, kind of grade your personality a little bit. So I would definitely encourage people to, to do a, a positive, uh, retroactive approach when they're kind of cleaning up their social media. So, so tell me what, what sprung this, this idea for this video. Um, just on Twitter, I guess I made a, a, com a comment one day uh, that I do think that, um, that social media is more important than a resume and I got a little bit of positive feedback from the younger what crowd. Mean, social media in general or LinkedIn? Um, no, not even LinkedIn. Just having, just having a social media repertoire, repertoire uh, it would be more important uh, than just handing someone a resume. So being able to to have you know experience in with Twitter and Facebook and let people really judge you um, through that and kind of you know set set yourself apart than just a piece of paper in an interview. Well, it's funny because I was actually uh, right before I came in here, I was looking someone up on Google. I couldn't find anything about them. Yeah. So that's obviously immediately kind of a red flag. Yeah, who is this <laughs> Do they person? Even exist? Yeah, they're, they're like a spy that they don't exist or using a false name. That's right. And then I, I started to Google myself just to check <laughs> what happens, right? To see, you know, before before I break or you know before I bad talk anyone. And the first two pages is all my social media profile pages. Yeah. All from Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, everything else. Um, and I guess I don't put anything on those on those social networks that I'm ashamed of. Yeah. Probably the opposite. Exactly. So I think that's a great way to be found. Yeah. And I don't see how that'd be different for a vet. I know you guys were looking for a vet recently. Well, how, well, how do you kind of go through that? Oh, absolutely. If we if we're looking for a veterinarian or a tech, I don't know about the other guys in the office, but as soon as I get a name or a resume, I'm on Google and I'm trying to figure out everything I can yeah, about somebody. That's what I do. And it's actually, it discourages me if I can't find anything about that person, as opposed to if I was seeing, you know, a well, uh, well-groomed LinkedIn profile, uh, active involvement on Twitter, um, things like YouTube videos, all of those things really let me know who that person is, as opposed to just that very sterile, cold, <laughs> clinical piece of piece of paper yeah, that is I mean, a resume. It's, it's so inorganic, right, resume. It's yeah. like totally prefabricated, whereas when you have a bunch of social, a bunch of trails on the internet, you can really get a good image of someone, what he's like and, and, or her, what she's like. And, uh, you can easily get, even get a sense of personality, I think, uh, by searching for someone on Google. Yes. See what, the, what kind of preferences they have and what, what their passions are. So that's a good point. So I wanted to segue into two examples. So the first example will go with uh, Chris's vet school diary. So Chris Allen is a veterinary student. He's in uh, he's in his fourth year now, or 3.5, I think it says on his website. So what Chris does is he blogs, uh, and he does a really good job on Twitter. This guy has, I think he has 14,000 followers on Twitter, and he does so many posts on this blog. So the reason that Chris started his blog was he couldn't afford vet school and he developed this uh, this idea that maybe he could market his way through vet school. So he's from the UK and I think he moved to Slovakia to, to go, yeah, to Slovakia to uh, go to vet school because it'd be cheaper and in order to pay for the cheaper tuition he still had to, to raise money so he started a a blog and now he you'll see you, you know all kind of advertising on his blog but he does a very good job and he truly is marketing his way through vet school and I think as a as a little side feature which is gonna be huge for him is by the time he's done his vet career he's gonna have all this content and all this clout uh, with with veterinarians who are open to the social media realm that I think he's gonna have a really easy job or easy time getting a job. So if you've been following this guy for a couple of weeks because you got a resume on your desk and you see who he is and all the pictures of Chris holding different animals and he's very social, very interactive on Twitter. I've actually talked to him about this subject, uh, told him what a great job he's doing and how that's really gonna benefit him in the future and his uh, he's a little dumbfounded and he feels like uh, there's, I think you were in on that conversation with Chris the other day too. We were talking about um, how 
he, he sees it as, a, as an asset if he's applying to private practices, but if he's applying to corporate, uh, he thinks social media may be holding back a little bit or at least won't help. So I guess um, that's unfortunate, but as soon as corporate gets it, they're going to be wanting that guy. Say you're a drug company and you're hiring a veterinarian and you want to... Uh, like a tech service man? Yeah, say you're tech... And you all over it having exactly <laughs> so nobody gets that it say so if a farm company finally got it in their heads that they want no, to so use social media for marketing they hire Chris for his for his blog and his you know yeah, he's a good guy but. either this, either the farm company has no idea or doesn't want to know anything about social media you'll never even know or they are big about it and then he's going to be top of the list so exactly all, all of a sudden they hire I mean and they unless go. he's putting like weird pictures of him you know, no, cool it's perfect. Animals on social media. <laughs> He's t just telling his story. He's just yeah. a regular vet student. And all of a sudden, the pharma company has, uh, has 17,000 followers carry over just on one social media platform alone. People know his story. They become fans. It's, yeah. it's great. So that's Chris. So keep up the good work, Chris. And if you want to talk to us about that, that'll be great. So my next uh, case study is Jeremy Shaba. And I'll put Chris's... Uh, info up on at the bottom on this uh, video. So my next one is Jeremy Shaba. So it's jeremyshaba.com and Jeremy is a uh, vet student at OBC, Ontario Vet College and he is actually American born and then he moved to, to Canada to go to vet school. So what Jeremy does is he just wanted, he started blogging and he just wanted an outlet uh, to share his crazy and wild stories and as he got closer to his fourth year, he got a pretty exciting idea as he started thinking about uh, doing externships and then even potential internships uh, in big referral uh, equine practices throughout the US and Canada. So he gets on, uh, he gets on the internet and he sets up a, a video meeting with residents and interns and veterinarians um, that are all across the US and Canada to talk about their experiences at that practice. So he just sits there and, and does a video interview with them and these things are great. So now Jeremy has developed this rapport with all these, these vet clinics. He's done uh, marketing and promotion of these different vet clinics, these different referral centers. And at the same time, he's learning about them. So I think Jeremy's gonna have his, the pick of the litter when it comes to applying to, to different internships. So he's doing a great job, yeah, I mean, no I, doubt. I'd love to hear someone argue the fact that you shouldn't be in, on social media. I mean, <laughs> well, so they say... I'd like to hear the arguments. Exactly. What, what are the reasons? So I, I agree 100%. It doesn't matter what your job is, whether you're a veterinary practice owner like myself, or you're a student, or you sell hot dogs for a living. It really doesn't matter. Uh, nobody's job is 100% is secure. And... One day you might find yourself out there passing resumes around. Well, and if, the thing is, you can't really avoid it either. If I see someone walking the street and make a picture and put them on Twitter, what's he going to do? He's <laughs> going to be on Twitter. There's nothing you can do about it, so you might as well control it and understand That's right. it. That's so, right. Yeah, I, know, I still don't understand that discussion. <laughs> so, I, I'll uh, put Jeremy's information up there. Jeremy's on Twitter as well. Um, Jeremy and... Yeah, Jeremy's on Instagram. He does a good job. There's not very many vet male vet students, I guess, on Instagram right now. So he does a great job there. So I'll put that link up there too. So hopefully, um, hopefully that gives you a little bit of background on why I think you should be on social media for the pure reason of nobody's job is secure. And as soon as an employer gets a resume, they're looking you up. And if there's information to find and good quality information and shows that you're passionate, shows that you understand marketing, shows that you're a person, uh, I think that's going to be a lot more beneficial than any of the, the awards that you got in high school or university or, or your, even your volunteer experience. All of that's important, don't get me wrong, but you can you can portray that through your social media as well, and you probably get a, a lot more bang for your buck anyways. Yeah. So, we had unexpected Diedrich in the video today, but I think it worked out good. Any yeah. final thought? Yeah. Uh, yeah, one final thought. If you ever go to a vet clinic for an interview and they don't hire you based on your social media presence, 
Call me and I'll hire you. <laughs> there you go. I'll put Diedrich's information at the bottom of the video too. Okay, see you guys.